in the embassies. I believe it is this, Selcor. Urgently, human, I must speak to you on behalf of my people. Oh? What is it? Holding sorrow, Takuna, my home world, the Reapers have come. Holding sorrow, our warriors are under siege, but your forces can rescue them. Urgently, please, all the other races have turned us aside. Elcor, warriors? We don't hear much about them. How do your people fight? Proudly, with BI-assisted infantry. Our soldiers carry heavy weapons into battle, mounted on their backs. That's amazing. It's pride and shame. Our enemies have called us living tanks, as well as names less flattering. And for that reason, oh boy, do I wish, do I wish that there was the ability to play as an Elcor in Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, because if you didn't know, just in case you didn't know, Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, although not in Legendary Edition, does of course still exist, and is, in fact, does still have an active group of people playing for the original Mass Effect 3, and you're not just stuck with playing your human characters of the various classes. No, you can play as Turians, Asari, Salarians, even Batarians and Drell, so lots of it, Krogan. Lots of options there, but unfortunately, Elcor is not among them. But it would have been amazing if you could play as an Elcor with a freaking cannon mounted on its back. Ah, uh, would have been amazing. That, that would be, I don't know if that would be my top choice for if I could add any character that is not currently available in Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. It would either be that or potentially a Hanar. Because Hanar also, unfortunately... There is not a playable character for that in Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, but if you could have one of those, and I'm just imagining a Hanar with the melee ability to slap enemies with one of its tentacles, and then if you, like, spam the melee button, you get a super slap combo, and you stun your enemies <laughs> while you slap them in the face, that would be amazing. That would also be amazing. So one of those two. If I could pick one, I'm not sure which one it would be. One of those two, though. So I will do what we can to help. I do. I thought this was the Elcor that gave us this quest already. Perhaps not? I'll take the Normandy as soon as we have time. Relief. Thank you, Commander. Small hope. Perhaps we can evacuate some of our civilians when your forces arrive. Anxiously, I will remain here for news. Please hurry. Takuna burns. Because, of course, we were just at Takuna. Elcor Extraction. Hmm. Okay. Might that be an entirely different mission? The Elcor have requested an emergency extraction for warriors and civilians trapped on their homeworld of Dakuna. Search for survivors on Dakuna, rescue them if possible, and return to the Elcor Ambassador. Okay. Yes. It is a totally different mission. Oh no, this Elcor is in Purgatory. Okay, maybe I just remembered seeing this Elcor previously and assumed that this was the guy we were looking for. But, uh, yes, only for a different mission. Of course, there is the Spectre Terminal over here, and there is the place where we're planning to talk to the Asari peoples who have a quest for us, the main quest for us. I'm deliberately avoiding that because we obviously will do it at some point, but I think it flows better if we wait to do that on a time when we're going to immediately follow up and, and see that through, which, since we have other things planned here, may not be the case this time. Nothing new there, but here, the question is, 56,000 is only enough to get these Reeves that we missed, but, I mean, power recharge speed is not bad for us since we're a power-based character, but still, for the most part, we have borderline instantaneous recharge time on some of our skills, so don't think that's a huge thing and the other the upgrades that I, or the the weapons that i was potentially thinking we might pick up we don't yet have enough money for them once we turn in this quest here at purgatory then maybe we will i was thinking that I thought it was this guy so i figured oh you know we'll turn that in then we'll take a look at the spectre terminal and maybe that'll be just enough for us to buy something but not yet spectre status recognized please select a destination okay so purgatory 
Oh, I remember which Elcor this is. It's this guy. Now arriving at ward level purgatory. I He's the angry Elcor. The agents from Jakuna. It's waiting for you in bay D24. This is wonderful news. Sincerely, this will greatly aid our people. So, a bunch more credits, and war asset as well. We, we haven't spent as much time in purgatory as of late, Wait, have we? You asked if I got heavy armor. I never said it was heavy armor. Uh... And since when do you know anything about shield fasteners? I read about them. Did you say you sold your car a few weeks ago? Because that's around the time I got sent this new armor. Hey, is okay. that so? And I'm not letting my friend miss a night of purgatory, right? Do you want to go in, or do you want to talk about my car some more? No, you're right. Let's go in, and I'm buying you some goddamn drinks. So in case. That wasn't clear. We heard about this Salarian previously, who was bragging a bit about his new armor that he was able to purchase, or received as a gift, and also asked his friend here about apparently the really nice car or air vehicle of some variety that she sold, and why did you do that? It was, it was amazing. And as we just figured out, she sold it so that she could afford this amazing armor, which she then secretly gifted to her Solarian friend. And that's just so wholesome. That's just so wholesome. And hence why drinks are on him tonight. Okay. Anyone else, though, in here that we're forgetting about? But as I think I said on a previous occasion, although his armor may be amazing, I'm, I'm afraid there are other... Solarians who also have that same armor. That's okay, man. You're still special. Your friend still really cares about you, and that's what matters. Uh, more from Joker and Edie, or same as when we last left them here? Your turn. Counselor Irissa. Yeah, we've heard this. Not hot. Too much makeup. Not really my thing. Shaira the Consort. Uh, hot, I guess? Can we stop this? You're creeping me out. Dallage past Linron. Absolutely Ew. not. <laughs> okay. A second there, I thought we knew this guy, the way he was kind of just staring at us, but no, we do not. Okay. Let's check upstairs, but... Otherwise, obviously, the R is there, but... Or not the R. Um... What the hell's your problem? I'm not skinny, Elias. Hmm? I said to one of you so chummy with those Calm down. Totally no big deal. Oh, Cortez. Oh, Cortez did ask us to come here. This is true. But yeah. Um, Aria over there. So, here's the thing. So, is it a dance option? For this individual? It is. Okay. Uh, we, we've done our Shepherd Shuffle in the past. So, you can, you can, if you would like, chat with Cortez here. However, in doing so, you may open the door to a relationship with Cortez that you may or may not be interested in pursuing. So just proceed the way that you would like to proceed. And in this occasion, since we are uh, taken, since Tally is, Tally is our partner of choice, I think we will leave Cortez there. Sorry, Cortez, nothing personal, except it kind of debatably is personal, but you know what I mean. So after we turned in that quest, we're now at 71,000. I don't quite think that's enough to buy any meaningful weapons from the Spectre Terminal. The Paladin Pistol is solid, and I think it might be the cheapest one there. We might be close to doing that. There's a non-zero chance that one could be done, but I think we'll be fine without it. We'll just instead, actually, 
use oh, excuse me this spot to head straight back to the Normandy because I think we're ready to do that now okay so now that we're back on the Normandy now that we've done a bunch of exploration and turned in the quests from all the stuff we picked up from that exploration perhaps it is finally time after <laughs> seemingly preparing ourselves to do this mission on several prior occasions for us to do where are you where are you now masana distress signal because this one asari high command has requested help dealing with a distress signal on an asari colony go to the colony and investigate the situation as i said previously we got this a while ago I think after finishing Tuchanka, but we did not give it much thought. Basically said it was something that we were intending to save for quite a while before we were going to take it on, and perhaps, perhaps, this is that time. I mean, also, we, of course, just recently picked up the Elcor Extraction, which may also be something that we're going to want to do in the not-so-distant future, too. But, uh, I think, well... I honestly, I completely forgot about this mission. I honestly completely forgot about this mission. So, um, that one, we might just find another occasion to sneak in. But for now, for now, we will look at the distress signal. Okay, so let's head out. And said distress signal is here in the Nimbus Cluster. And I vaguely remember that, yeah, it is not in the starting area. It's over in the Masana system. Fortunately, I think we're fully fueled up. That is right. Wow. Okay. So, oh. Hmm. I think we've explored this area 100%. Yet, not seeing that we've done or discovered anything here. So perhaps, there just is nothing here. And since we do have an active mission in this system, that means we can theoretically scan to our heart's content. And I don't think we've been here. Have we been here at all? Did we deliberately just completely skip this system, knowing that we would be here on a future occasion for when we did this quest? Maybe. Let's take a quick look and see if this sounds even remotely familiar. Vileus. Vileus is a hydrogen methane ice giant drifting out in the frozen depths. Its orbit hosts rings of rocks and ice, as well as many moons, all drawn from what would otherwise be a secondary asteroid field similar to Sol's Super Belt. Vilas is named for a trickster figure in Asari mythology, a crafty animal called a mandal that seduced Asari maidens who gave then gave birth to hideous deformed offspring. Ooh, sounds pretty pretty terrible. In the tales, Vilas is caught and punished but they serve as a warning to young Asari not to initiate a bond with anyone they cannot trust. Okay. I think we can say pretty definitively that there is not anything for us to scan here. Purely just for the information. Shostesia. A hydrogen helium gas giant, Shostesia is a twin to its more massive neighbor, Madokos, in more than one sense. The two are named for a semi-mythological pair of twins from Asari antiquity who ruled neighboring city-states and had a lifelong dialogue about the best form of government. As the legend goes, Dostesia died before her vision of a dem democratic republic could be realized. Her sister, Madokos, then took up the cause, sacrificing personal power so that all free landowners in her city would have a voice. Although historians doubt that the changes were entirely altruistic, Pointing to the uprising that demand representation, 
the development was a step toward modern Asari government. Okay. Then presumably this is the twin planet, Medokos. Medokos is a medium-sized uh, gas giant. A little bit of an oxymoron, but sure. Although its mass exceeds that of Jupiter, the planet is somewhat denser and thus smaller. A large number of moons, planetesimals, and other detritus orbits Medokos, as its gravitational pull has cleared the neighborhood of material that might otherwise form an asteroid belt. Then we have Lymetis. Lymetis is a desertified rock planet with a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and monoxide. The surface has water ice as well as occasional liquid water near volcanic areas. The planet has an abundant supply of zeolites, which the Asari use for water purification, as an ingredient in detergent, and as a shielding material for disposal of radioactive waste. The small colony still maintains the mining equipment. Despite centuries of colonization, the Asari have developed uh, Limetis as a mod at a modest pace. The planet shows no sign of resource exhaustion. Population of 12,550, so still certainly not a huge amount of people here, but I mean, it's founded 430 BCE, so this was a long time ago. And lastly, the place that we are planning to land, Lessis, which for what it's worth, I think it's actually not the planet that is listed here on the mission. Masana, distress signal. This is not Masana. Oh, it is in the Masana system, I suppose. Okay, fair enough. Lessis investigated Sari Colony, and of course, planet in general. So Lessis is an unpopular garden world with characteristics just outside the comfort zone of its Asari population. Its gravity is a little too high, its disease is a little too virulent, and in the soil, inhospitable for growing food. Further information is difficult to come by. The Asari government is uncharacteristically silent about Lessis. Normally, a garden world settled so long ago would be highly populated, but little light po pollution can be seen on Lessis's night side. Yeah, it was founded 473 BCE a long time ago. Population no one knows, capital Maria. And, I mean, pressure's a little bit light. Temperature, a little bit hot. Gravity, a little bit strong, but theoretically, not that bad, right? And this is the place where we're planning to do this mission, so uh, we, we've we read about it many times before, so let's get going. Okay, in terms of who we would like to bring for this mission, now, one thing that I will note about this mission, I'm trying to avoid spoilers at this stage, but obviously we, we delayed it for quite a while, but this... This could be one of the most difficult missions that we've done thus far, at least in some respects. So if you're playing along for the first time yourself, then just heads up, proceed with caution. So I suppose that's one reason to delay a little bit so that you have more time to power up. So I believe Liara does have at least a little bit of unique dialogue on this mission. So for that reason, perhaps it does make sense to bring her. But as I was saying, on this mission, you could make a case. You could make a strong case for going a no-nonsense approach and just taking whichever squad mates you feel most comfortable with, whichever ones you feel like in a dire situation you could rely upon. So for that reason, I'm thinking that uh, we will use James. No, I'm kidding. We're going to use Garrus. Who am I kidding? I suppose I should mention, technically speaking, the things that you should be trying to deal with would be, uh, hmm. A little bit of crowd control, I think. And armor damage, barrier damage, maybe a tiny bit of shields damage, but mostly just packing a whole lot of damage, which is, of course, exactly what Garrus does. So that's why... I think he's a, a logical choice here, in addition to being just someone that we generally feel more comfortable with. We did recently pick up the incisor 
Uh, not a weapon that we intend to use anytime soon. Certainly not on Shepard. It's lighter than a javelin, but that's not saying much. Uh, its big thing is that it shoots in a three-round burst, so that's why its rate of fire looks kind of fast here. But uh, no, no thanks. We will pass on that. And for Garrus, I think we stick with this. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And for Liara, does this change? Or does this change? Hmm. Or for us, for that matter. Hold on just a second. So, this would theoretically be a mission in which you could justify going for a weapon that is more along the lines of just pure damage like the Arc Pistol, rather than the Acolyte, which is useful for getting rid of shields specifically, and barriers specifically, but in terms of, like, just raw damage output, regardless of the circumstances, not really the Acolyte's strength. It's more niche than that. So you you could make a decent case for going Arc Pistol here, but I think we're just going to rely on Garrus to, to pack... The biggest punch damage-wise, Talon will also be useful for pistol users. Scorpion's not bad in that sense, but, uh, well, Scorpion might be a little bit tough for reasons that may become apparent a little bit later on. Acolyte, potentially a little bit difficult for that reason as well, but uh, Hurricane, also, maybe, maybe not the best, SMGs in general, maybe not the best in this encounter, but, um, no, we're, we're just going to rely very, very heavily on Garrus in this mission, I think. So uh, let's just say I'm glad that we're going to have him with us. Okay, so I think that means we're all set here for weapons. Do we need the stability? Uh, we probably do still need the stability for Liara on the Hurricane. I know squad mates tend to fight stability a little bit better than players can, but the kick on the Hurricane is extreme. So, uh, in this situation, it, it is probably still necessary. All right. Then, for us, we can afford another shockwave. And do not, I repeat, do not take radius shockwave. At least in the original Mass Effect 3, it is bugged and horribly bugged at that, to the point where taking the radius upgrade, I think, means something along the lines of you can use it once or twice, at least... In Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, that would mean use it once or twice for the whole match. And, and then after that, for the remainder of the match, it is basically incapable of hitting anything. So quite literally, you use it once or twice, and then it is completely useless. Which, if you take Radius, and then maybe you invest more in Shockwave and get a whole bunch of, you know, reach or detonation or damage or what have you, um, good luck. Good luck relying on an ability that is pretty much unusable as one of your primary damage dealers. It's not going to end well for you. So instead, we're going to go with damage and force, which I mean, it's not a bad thing by any means, but uh, does mean that, of course, less AoE. Not that, not that uh, this would actually help if it's not going to hit anything, but uh, the, the damage is still at 410 is not that great, but the force at 1,200 Newtons is a ton. And that gets high enough at that point where this can somewhat reliably stagger even some bigger enemies. The, the stagger threshold for enemies, I believe at least in multiplayer, I assume it's also the case in single player as well, does change depending on what difficulty you're on. So hard to give a, a hard and fast number here. I don't know exactly what it is in the campaign, but 1,000 Newtons is an important threshold in multiplayer on I think on gold difficulty for some enemies so again I don't exactly know how it will translate into single player but is there another force upgrade there's not another force upgrade so I mean this is what it's going to cap out at here but it's a lot it's a lot so in addition to being something that we can shoot through walls occasionally as a, a source of stagger might be good to knock some enemies back I mean for the most part we're probably going to be saving 
the cluster grenades for that purpose if we really need to get someone who's right on top of us, but this has some questionable accuracy, so maybe, maybe even then, Shockwave sometimes has some use getting people off of us. Okay, that's Shepard. Liara, it's been a little while, actually. It's been a little while. We do have some points to spend here. So, oof. Oof. Stasis. Once upon a time, we really wanted to get to bubble stasis. That was primarily to deal with phantoms because it is amazing against servers when they have the phantoms chasing after you because uh, they can't really stop you from stasising them. So that's awesome, but I don't think that's going to be a big factor here. Either we go for warp ammo or headshot damage. Damage to health and armor. Damage to barriers. As I was saying, barrier damage will be significant. Will be significant. So that's nothing to snuff at here. Or increased damage to lifted targets by 50%. That is also really nice, though. By lifted targets, I believe that means any enemy that is primed by biotic effects. Not literally things that are in the air lifted. So, for example, if you warp an enemy that can't be lifted, then you can still deal the extra damage uh, with this enhanced warp rounds. At least while the, the duration of that, that uh, prime effect is in place from the warp. So that's, that does make it a little bit tougher to say here. I mean, that might make Enhanced Warp actually a little bit better. Obviously, the number is bigger here than it is in this case, and also weaken armored targets, making it so we deal more damage to armored targets. So that's tempting. It is tempting. But the alternative would be pure biotic, which at this point means probably not weapons damage, probably... Power force and duration, which for Liara that means mostly warp. Probably what I mean duration for stasis, duration for singularity, yes, but damage for warp. And last one would be singularity recharge by 100%. Out of curiosity. What is the current recharge for singularity looking like? It's two point or four point two nine seconds. That's that's pretty quick. It's not as quick as ours. Ours is pretty much instantaneous. We use it once, and by the time we finish the animation, we're pretty much able to do another one right away. So, uh, it's not that fast, but it's still pretty solid. So I'm not sure that's really necessary. And maybe, for that reason, we go warp ammo here. And... So one thing about the headshots is that problem with this our acolyte our pistol that we use most often cannot get headshots because it shoots a projectile not an actual bullet the scorpion the pistol that liara is using cannot get actual headshots because it also shoots a projectile not a bullet so those are the weapons that we use most often for us and the weapon that we use most often for liara so that means that headshots most of the time is not useful for us I mean, for other squad mates because we do have squad ammo on this. Potentially, in the case of Garrus, not so, because he has his own ammo effect that's going to override this. So, although it's not nearly as exciting, it might actually mean that ammo capacity is the way to go here. I think it kind of is. I mean, it would still affect the Hurricane, yes, which is the secondary weapon for, I think, both us and Liar, but the Hurricane is not exactly the most precise of weapons so making a point of lining up headshots with it is not really a thing you might inadvertently happen to coincidentally get a few shots on an enemy's head but sustained headshots not really a thing well we do have the stability modifier which helps hmm is that reason enough i don't think we've really tested the hurricane much after having fully upgraded our stability, I think we fully upgraded the stability mod, so is it stable enough to actually target a specific part of an enemy's body and aim for headshots? I am not sure. So I think we just play it safe here, go for the capacity. I know it's not as exciting, but I think it does actually make more sense. And then lifted target damage, 125% if we go the route. That's, I think, also too good to pass up. 
and the armor weakening is is no small contributing factor either. Damage is good, but yes, I think we go this route. I think we still go that route. Okay, so that's Liara. She has three points left, but that's not enough for us to do anything meaningful for her. Garrus, with four points. Not enough for Concussive Shot. It is enough for Proxy Mine. And that means I mean, we can increase the damage a, a little bit. That's something, I guess. Sure, we'll take it. Okay. So I think that now means that Garrus has used all the points that he can realistically use. Liara has now used all the points that she can realistically realistically use. I mean, sure, Shepard could put a point into pull. But uh, no, no, I think we're just going to save up our, our next points for another shot shockwave upgrade here. So, uh, all right. Okay, let's carry on. Dig up any information on the mission, Liara? I did, and I now understand why High Command wanted to hide it. We're headed to an Ardat Yakshi monastery. What? Ardat Yakshi? Like Morinth? Morinth chose to be a killer. These Ardat Yakshi isolated themselves to avoid that. But it doesn't mean they're harmless. Their urge to feed can be powerful. That's why High Command sent in commandos to investigate the monastery's distress signal. So what does the sorry High Command want us to do? If there was a chance the Ardat Yakshi could break loose, the commandos were to purge the monastery. Purge? You mean destroy? They would have yeah. brought heavy explosives with them, yes. Okay, I mean, this does ring a bell. Not long ago, we found ourselves in a similar situation in which people were resorting to going the explosive routes when perhaps there may have been a more calm, collected, diplomatic way to approach the situation. Was it really necessary for them to go that route? Morinth was dangerous, but are the Ardat Yakshi this big of a threat? Morinth was just hitting her stride. Ardat Yakshi who kill leave behind astronomical body counts. It's why they can never be free, and why they're such a great source of shame to the Asari. Not more why High Command won't was quite notable this place how many people she'd killed. They'd never risk a single Ardat Yakshi getting loose. By Ardat Yakshi standards, even. Did we not hear that in Mass Effect 2? I mean, Liara's saying she just hit her stride, but I I thought that we'd heard that Morinth had racked up quite a kill count already. But okay, I mean, as we said, I think even if the bombs may be there, it is, uh, it's a last resort. We'd prefer not to go that route if we don't have to. Don't assume anything. Maybe the Ardat Yakshi sent out the distress call. If the Asari want us to destroy this place, I need to know what happened. Agreed. Once we give a report to High Command, they'll stop wasting lives here. Okay. So, Ardat Yakshi. Of course, significant for Mass Effect 2. Let's see. Um, is it under Temple Species? Oh, well, I mean, that's like a sorry on the whole. But here we have it. In case you don't remember, or it's your first time hearing what this is, as a reminder, Ardut Yakshi, or Demon of the Night Winds, are a sorry suffering from a genetic disorder preventing conventional melding of nervous systems during mating. Instead, Ardat Yakshi electrochemically ravage their partner's nervous systems in extreme cases, leaving victims as vegetative invalids or corpses. Sorry psychologists regard this incapacity for mental fusion as preventing the development of empathy, leading to psychopathy. Psychopathy? They, they turn into psychopaths. There is no known cure. The disorder generally begins in infancy, reaching full pathology during maiden adolescent sexual development. While seductive and driven as other Asari, Ardat Yakshi are congenitally sterile. So they can't actually have children, but if they, you know, if they put on the schmooves, then they kill people in the process. 
more often than not. Ancient Asari mythology held Arakyakushi as gods of destruction, depicting them as villains of countless legends and as the anti-heroes of numerous Asari epics. Contrary to popular belief, Arakyakushi are neither extremely rare, around 1% of Asari dwell on the AY spectrum, which I... Arakyakushi spectrum. I mean, 1% doesn't sound like a lot, but bear in mind that there are, of course, billions of Asari in the galaxy, and that does equate to many, many Ardat Yakshi. Nor are they all murderers, though, so they may not always stand out. Most cultivate and discard countless exploitative or abusive relationships during their legally marginal lives. Despite rumors of Ardat Yakshi syndicates, by nature Ardat Yakshi are incapable of long-term cooperation. As a disproportionately wealthy species, Asari employ their economic reach and media ownership to hide the Ardat Yakshi pathology from the galactic community, placing most Ardat Yakshi in monitored work programs or seclusion. Only the most aggressive cases are sentenced to sanitaria and prisons or to the execution lists of Justicars. And that was, of course, the case for Borinth in Mass Effect 2, and in large part, why we ran into Samara, or, well, I mean, the primary thing that Samara wanted to resolve before we went and took on the suicide mission in Mass Effect 2. So, uh, that was, that was Morinth, that was us learning about Ardot Yakshi from Samara, who, of course, was just a car. So, okay, that's the overview. Let's save now that we're here. My visor's IR says this shuttle's warm. Visitor. Hmm. Okay. All right then. Let's look around a little bit. Suspicious. Suspicious. And let's just say, this mission, for a few reasons, might might just keep us a little bit more on edge. Assault rifle stability damper. Not bad, there was a point in time which we were thinking that might be worth using with the Typhoon for some of our squad mates, but I think we've seen the light since then, decided that was not worth doing. Okay, so now let's head in. Actually, I mean, it's very interesting architecture, for what it's worth. Also cool there, but... Very dramatic. Very dramatic. And is this the Asari symbol or something? I mean, that looks kind of familiar, and that's kind of the shape we see there as well. Hmm. Okay, that may be the case. Well, here goes nothing. Elevator disabled. To prevent entry or escape, I wonder. Hmm. Okay. I guess that means we're jumping across. Come on, team. What could possibly go wrong as we head into this extremely creepy, um, horror music area? Where it's dark. And, and what have you. That sound. And there are screams. Okay. So this might be, probably is, the most horror-esque of perhaps every Mass Effect mission in, dare I say, the entire trilogy? I'm trying to think to Mass Effect 1. Ah, in Mass Effect 1, there were occasionally some situations in which it was very dark and gloomy and mysterious, and so... There were also times when we got surprised by, in those situations where we got surprised by stuff. So, like, maybe in Mass Effect 1, there were those types of situations. Mass Effect 2? Not really. I don't think, unless you want to call some of the missions with the collectors. But, I mean, that, you knew what you were getting yourself into in advance for the most part. So, I don't think that really fits the same criteria. Not this time. All we know... 
is there are some Asari that are potentially capable of killing people. It's dark, it's abandoned, creepy music, and we're hearing screams. Nothing to see here. Totally nothing to be worried about. 